What does FTX and the Liver King happen to do with sports cards? What do they have in common? Fuck! You're kidding! Judge, judge. Well, we're here to talk about it. It's a Friday. Stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. How are we doing? It is another day. It is another card video. We are back again. I appreciate you guys. You stick with me. A lot of you guys are here every single day and I very much appreciate it. I am trying to bring you some sort of entertainment in this wild world of ours. Something just to kind of laugh at for a few minutes during your day. So thank you very much for tuning in. We've had great numbers as far as views and subscribers moving up and all that stuff. So I very much appreciate it. On that note, if you are new here, please hit that big red button, the subscribe button down below. Also connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad. And I'm also on Twitter if you enjoy the Twitter machine. It's kind of a hectic place, but I am there, the Sports Card Dad. All right, guys, let's dive right into this thing. So I'll start with the Liver King. And for those that don't know who this guy is, fair enough, because he really just came onto the scene a little over a year ago. This is kind of a bodybuilding fitness type phenomenon that popped up and his shtick is is that he sticks to these ancestral guidelines where he's eating raw animal organs like liver, hence the name the Liver King, and he's working out twice a day, blood burning workouts, I think is how he describes it. And he came on social media about a year ago and he's gotten all these you know viral uh, reels and different things because he's posting workouts and he's posting all these crazy claims and this and that and whatever. Well, it turns out that some emails popped up going back about 18 months uh, uh, where he essentially is asking about different PEDs, different types of testosterone mixes and peptides and all that stuff. This guy has always claimed to be natural. And if you look at his physique, it does not look natural at all, but he's selling you on the, the animal organs. I'm living like a caveman. And also he sells supplements. Last year, a hundred million dollars. So the guy is selling. People are buying into this. And this, this kind of bothers me because this kind of plays into the whole like health and fitness thing where you've got teenagers, mainly, mainly men. And then also 20 somethings that look at guys like this and they think, man, all I've got to do is just work out three times a day and just eat a perfect diet. And yes, you have to do all of these things, but in 99.9 percent of cases, you also have to be on gear or be on some sort of juice. And that is what kind of gets you over the top. It's estrogen blockers and it's testosterone boosters. There's a lot going into the muscle and fitness world that is very rarely talked about. And the liver king is just kind of the latest example of this where he does come out, he apologizes because, and actually I think, what did he call? It's not beta males, but he's got a name, subprimals for males that, that are, are basically on on PEDs, but not following these sorts of these sorts of guidelines that he's giving. So not only was he saying he's not doing it, but he's also essentially calling people losers that that are doing this thing, subprimals. And it turns out, of course, he is on PEDs as well. He released an apology video recently, and um, so we'll start with him. That's example number one. Oh, before I get into FTX, take a gander over at Drip Marketplace, live streaming platform for all sorts of different types of collectibles whether it be sports cards or comic books or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! There's a huge variety of different collectibles on the app. I will put all the details in the video description as well as in a pinned comment at $15 off on the site on your first purchase. I'll stick a code up there for you. Be sure to check out Drip and see if it's for you. Number two, this is a whole different type of thing in the crypto space. Of course, we've all heard FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. Want to make sure I got his name right. This is the 30-year-old billionaire phenom genius. Everyone's got him on a pedestal. He's got, well, had billions and billions of dollars in crypto assets on the FTX exchange. A lot of it was customer money that was misappropriated. It was lended to get leveraged against and this and what and whatever. And now FTX is filed for bankruptcy. They are broke. 
And again, you kind of see this guy is still on doing interviews and stuff. And this is the thing that absolutely baffles me is there's just not any real government involvement yet, which I'm not saying you have to run out and, and you know make an arrest quickly and all this and that. But you would think there would just be a little bit more talk, a little bit more action. I really hope that the government's looking at it behind the scenes because this is not a small scandal. I mean, this is tens of billions of dollars that just kind of vanished. And, you know, there's all sorts of conspiracy theories. Obviously, it's cast a horrible light on crypto in general and then also crypto exchanges. So it's got massive ripple effects. They call it like contagion in, in crypto because it just is one thing after the next with these exchanges. Celsius was another one that went under. Uh, Binance is another one that just filed for, for bankruptcy. And these were not small companies. They were huge companies that raised tons and tons of money. And so, you know, you have this guy, again, he's put on a pedestal. He's a genius. You know, all the politicians love him. And, you know, here we go again. It's just the same old kind of Bernie Madoff story and nothing's really being done. I thought it was just kind of funny. I saw a meme. I've been trying to find it. So apologies if I can't stick it up here, but Basically, it's something to the effect of like, you know, the, the government looking at FTX kind of looking away and then looking into, um, you know, the average person that sells $600 through PayPal or, you know, through eBay online sales. And it shows them like really magnifying in and focusing on that. And I think that that really kind of is a great meme because it's kind of like if you're kind of the average Joe, the middle class, upper middle class, you've got all the eyes on you. And, you know, this guy, Sam Bankman Fried, however you say his name, is just kind of of like, oh, I screwed up. Sorry, guys. And it's like, where is there any sort of action or any sort of care towards it? It's it's just incredibly odd to me. And so, Dustin, what does all of this have to do with sports cards? I don't think this is any different. I made a video a couple of days ago where I was talking about that I am not special in, in this space. Yes, I've got a YouTube channel, but I am not some sort of a special oracle when it comes to sports cards. I do appreciate people that enjoy the entertainment of the shows that we try to put out here, but this is not me coming to you as some sort of a sports card expert. Never have, never have. And so, you know, the the kind of the idols that we put all of this attention towards where it's like, man, this guy or gal can do no wrong. And I think that we're finally getting to a point where we're just not trusting politicians. We're not trusting business people. We're not trusting folks that do have these platforms. Just because you've built a platform does not necessarily mean that we all need to follow the the whatever is coming out uh, from that influencer, from that person, uh, from that politician, from that big business owner, whatever it is. You know, we all have to think for ourselves. And we have just seen so many lessons over the last three, six months and beyond. But just kind of these where people get built up, they're put on a pedestal and then we find out, oh, wow, they're human and they screwed up or they really, really badly screwed up, you know. And so this the, the big thing. And again, with sports cards, this could be whether it be content creators or business owners or whoever it is in this space. There's a lot of great people in the space. Don't get me wrong. But I think that when we put people on pedestals, it just gets a little bit out of whack. It's like they they slash I slash we don't know anything more than anybody else in most cases, even the long term collective collectors that might have more knowledge and more of a knowledge base on certain sets and this and whatever, most of the time they don't have knowledge on every single type of card or non-sport card or whatever. They've got sort of expertise in parts and pieces. That's why it's so important to listen to so many different people, to listen to a variety of different folks on all different types of, of ideas, listening to different ideas in different factions of the hobby. The hobby is broken up to, the sports card market slash hobby is broken up to into so many different sex. There's so many different, uh, just different pieces to this puzzle. And so anytime you have any one person that is coming, you know, as the, you know, I am the go-to for this, for this space, it is immediately, it's a red flag. And I'm not saying anyone in particular does this in the sports card space, but I think my main thing is don't put anybody on a pedestal, whether it be politicians or business people or whatever. And also that goes for hobby people as well, whether it be, you know, a content creator or a, you know, a business owner or whatever it might be, a long-term collector or a, or a new or a new collector that might seem to have some great ideas. You take it in, you, you take it in with a bunch of other opinions, and then you try to make the best decisions that you can. It's not to say that people don't have snippets. For me, I'm sure there's people that listen to me that they might disagree with 90% of the things I say, or 90% you're just kind of like, blah, whatever, and maybe they take 10%. There might be one little nugget, and hell, maybe that's just some 80s in a video game clip.
And that little nugget helps make their day a little bit better. And I think that's kind of the main messaging here. There's a lot of, what is the term that Warren Buffett used? It's kind of like once the tide rolls out, you find out who's naked or something to that degree. And now you've seen kind of some economic pressures uh, that have happened over the last 12 months. Now that is happening where you're, you're seeing people that might not have been quite as above board as expected financially in the financial space. So guys, as always, hope we brought some entertainment today. Have an amazing weekend ahead. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.